The Microtik CRS109 was released all the way back in 2014. In today's video, I'll show you whether it's still worth buying in 2023. Let's start with the outside and you may have already noticed that this one has some things that you do not see on low-cost consumer devices. For example, on top you can see an LCD touchscreen for easy management and for showing useful info, or a serial console port, or an SFP port. Now that last one is especially useful for everyone dealing with fiber cabling. It unfortunately is just the standard old 1 gigabit SFP, but it is there and it can be helpful. Also, this thing has two powering options. The first being a DC power jack. The second one is the power over Ethernet input on port Ethernet 1. On the sides, there are some interesting things going on. You can see holes for passive cooling, but the interesting things are those holes in the front. Because even though you don't get rack mount ears, this switch is exactly the same length as the Microtik CSS, which does have rack mount ears. And you can buy replacement ears for that one. Microtik even sells them on their official website for $6. So theoretically, you can mount it into a standard 19 inch server rack. Although it may seem like this is just a regular switch, this one has a trick up its sleeve. Well, it has two. The first is that this isn't just a switch. It's also a wireless access point. The second is that this one can do layer-free routing. It isn't very good and generally not recommended because it doesn't have a very powerful CPU, but you can use it as a simple home router with 8 switch ports and Wi-Fi without any problems. Now let's briefly talk about the Wi-Fi implementation, because even though it has Wi-Fi, it only has Wi-Fi 4 or 802.11n. This is a very old standard and it's starting to be deprecated on a lot of new devices. So I count it as one of the downsides of this switch. Also, the Wi-Fi antennas aren't really powerful and can cover only about 3 to 4 rooms before losing signal. But what it loses in Wi-Fi strength? in gains in software capabilities. Microtik devices are known to have a lot of features at very low prices, and this one is no exception. With this thing, you can do almost anything you imagine. Just take a look at the Winbox management app. Yeah, there are a lot of options and settings to tinker with. Let's go over a few interesting ones. First, quick set. As the name suggests, if you just want to set up a name and a password for your network, this is the only setting you have to change. You type the network name here, the password here, you press OK, and you're done. Enjoy your router. But seriously, it's this easy. If you want to do some cool stuff with your router, you can set up VLANs. You can play around with firewall and IP filtering. You can manage quality of service. You can set up a DHCP server, a DNS. There are a lot of options. Just be careful with the IP filtering and firewall. As I said, this doesn't have a very powerful CPU, so it can get very slow with many rules. And now, let's answer the final question. Is it worth the $120 price tag in 2023? The short answer would be, probably yes, but it depends. If you need a small 8-port switch with a ton of management features, SFP ports, two powering options, an LCD screen for easy management, and others, then absolutely. The old Wi-Fi standard and the not really powerful CPU are both two weak points of this device. But keep in mind that this thing came out almost nine years ago. 
even though it's that old. You can still download the latest Router OS 7.6 operating system from the official Microtik product website. It's also still marked as a current product and receives regular security and feature updates. And that's it for today. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to ask in the comments. You can also join my new Discord server. The invite link is in the description. And while you're there, click those like and subscribe buttons. It's free and it helps out a lot. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.